Welcome to Powering Conversation with SP Energy Networks. We are back for a second season to hear more incredible stories from some inspirational women in sport. This week I am delighted to be joined by Holly Davidson, Scottish rugby referee and an absolute trailblazer in the world of officiating. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Yeah, not too bad, thank you. Are you training this afternoon? Yes, this afternoon, in with the boys. In with the boys, what you got on? Some running and some gym work. Nice. Yeah. Right, shall we head inside and go have a chat? Sounds good. Let's go. Welcome, how are you? Good, thank you, how are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. Excited to have you here. Um, so, obviously, you've had quite an exciting few months in terms of announcements and a busy few months in terms of what you've been up to but what we kind of always like to do with Power and Conversation is start at the beginning. Yep. So tell me a little bit about just how you got into sport. Uh, so my mum is a big runner, loves sport so she probably was a big driver in my passion for sport from a young age Yeah. Um, and actually the first sport that I ever started playing was football. Um, I originally am from just outside Glasgow, where football is probably the Best part biggest, of yeah, the biggest sport. So, <laughs> played sport, uh, played football, sorry, until I was maybe um, 13, 14, and after football, then went into into rugby. And what was your first rugby team? Uh, a boy. It was our little school team. Uh, our technical teacher at the time was a huge Bath rugby supporter. And he used to come in in his big old cotton traders t-shirt um, <laughs> and that was like such a fond memory and he decided why do we not have a girls team at the school uh, and that's where we we kicked off cool and then in terms of playing career mm -hmm. what kind of i guess what came next and where i guess where did the transition come so when did you kind of decide maybe not playing anymore maybe mm -hmm. going into fishing so i I played through school and then did sort of age grade Scotland stuff. Um, at the time it was regional, sort of under 16s, under 18s. Uh, and then I played basketball just my fifth and sixth year for something totally different. And when I came to university at Edinburgh, uh, there was a taster session. And I thought, oh, why not? We'll go down. And I dragged one of my new friends I'd made in Freshers Week to come down with me, a girl called Jenny Meager. And we ended up doing the whole four years at Edinburgh University together, uh, captained and she was president of the club, nice. which was great. And then during my first and second year, I went into under 20s and then moved to play for Murrayfield Wanderers at the same time. Um, and from there, got selected into the Scotland senior setup, age sort of 19, um, but through injury with shoulders and. Choice. Yeah, just, just being probably a slightly smaller person. Uh, I took a few knocks here and there, and after surgery, it just it wasn't the same. So I thought why can I not try something different? I felt I was still really young to maybe move into coaching. So I thought I could do that. I looked at the people that were refereeing at the time and I challenged myself to be, to actually give something back to the game in, in refereeing. Did anyone kind of influence that decision? Was there someone that said like, maybe you should give this a go or was it purely just off your own back? Yeah, I think I was, um, you know what nines are like. They're always challenging <laughs> to referees. And I probably was that person that always questioned how are they missing things? Yeah. Like this is the so people obvious. You hate. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the people now I'm like, oh gosh. Yeah. Um so I thought if I'm having those thoughts myself, then I can't sit and have these thoughts and not do anything about it. And that's when I decided why not just give it a go. Yeah. So Scottish Rugby put on a female course, I went along and um Bob who was my coach moving forward, a guy called Bob Easton, um, really then said, do you know, if you want to take this further, then, do you know, like, we'll invest our time in you. Um, and it kind of just kicked on from there. That's cool. In terms of, like, I guess, at the minute, with the way the women's game's going, we've got, like, a real growing, I'm sure, like, you can tell mm. us about it, but a real growing group of female referees. When you first came into the game, did you have any role models that you looked up to that were females, or were you kind of just looking at male referees at that point and kind yeah. of aspiring to be like them. Yeah, I think in Scotland we had um, Alex Pratt. She'd gone to the Olympics, so I'd seen her like on the TV. But yeah, like you said, female sport I never thought was hugely publicised on the television. So the only refs that we were seeing were your, your Nigel Owens, mm -hmm. Wayne Barnes, etc. So you never had a female official to on the sort of world stage to aspire to. But like you said, now we've transitioned to a point where 
there's a strong group of female refs and we're getting exposure both in women's six nations uh, but also in the in the men's fixtures yeah no it's fantastic in terms of like that group i guess but also beyond that group would you say there's any one person who's had the biggest impact on you as an, an as a referee um or a couple of people if, if you don't want to put yeah. the word. <laughs> <laughs> i suppose um the one person I met within that environment was Alambra Navis, who now actually heads up the women's section of match officials in World Rugby. But she'd literally just come off the back of doing the gold medal match at Rio Olympics. Yeah. And I'd gone out to do my first sevens competition, which was an under 18s in Vichy down in France. And for someone to have just gone, gone and done the gold medal match, to come to a really small little competition and have no ego, literally took me under her wing and just said you need to enjoy this experience and she was a mentor throughout the entire time that she continued to referee and now she's still you know now yes she's in a different capacity she's almost my boss in world rugby yeah. but she's always that an open um person to questions and advice um so yeah probably her mm. in a similar vein is there a referee that you would say is either the best you've worked with mm -hmm. or someone you think you might not have worked with him, but is the best in the game. Um, this is a hard one, I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose um, the one person that um, I've worked with, that I gained a lot from, um, would actually probably, when I, I was junior in my refing, was Matt Carley came to do the Scotland-New Zealand game here. Yeah. Um, I think it was maybe 2017. Yeah, I remember that. Um, and I was number five and I'd, I'd not been refing that long and just being able to be involved in his briefing of the teams, mm -hmm. um, the detail he went into uh, in his preparation, pre-game, um, and then how actually post-game he was able to maybe put work down for a second and just enjoy the company of his team that he was part of, I thought was, was really nice. I can become quite obsessive over things and as soon as the game finishes, go back and review it. Yeah. Um, so it was quite nice to know that at, at that level it's good to actually take some time away Definitely, some breathing, yeah. breathing space um, so that's probably who I learned a lot from at yeah. a younger um, stage of my career and then working with um, I've always really enjoyed working with Romain Platt oh, yeah. He, um, yeah, he's, <laughs> he always a has character. a smile on his face yeah. yeah an absolute character and actually he's just there to enjoy himself no he's got a job to do but he always does it with you know a smile on his face and is so involving of the entire team. You know, like I, one thing that I think is quite like interesting is obviously as a player, you'll have that experience of like preparing for a big match. And mm -hmm. what is the comparison? Like, are you as nervous or more nervous as an official going towards a big match or a player? Yeah, um, I suppose when I was younger, I've always struggled with nerves. I was I was a spewer. Yeah, I was a spewer yeah, before <laughs> games and I, I definitely had that at the beginning of my refing career. I think when you become more accustomed to your environment, uh, those nerves turn more into excitement, yeah. I think. However, then you move into the next sort of sphere. So whether that's <clears> for me, when I started doing Women's Six Nations, and then when I moved into sort of men's pro stuff, that those nerves and those butterflies came back. Um, but I suppose the prep is the same. The only thing mm. that I would highlight that's different is you train with the same girls week in, week out. Uh, when I go out to do a game, the team that I work with very rarely will all be from Scotland. Yeah. Um, and so I might meet some of my team on the Thursday or Friday before a Saturday fixture. And we have to try and come together um, as a collective four in the same sort of wavelength than four individual people from different unions. That's really tough. Yeah. That's like an extreme example of teamwork, I guess, <laughs> in terms of having to week in, week out, work with different people, but do it so quickly. Yeah. Is that as well with like language barriers and stuff like that, I imagine that's a massive challenge. Yes, it is. I'm, I'm, we've spoken about like, I'm starting to, to do a little bit more French to try and get my, Amazing. my skills up. Yeah. Go on then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it means that when you're giving briefs to your teams, you have to try and make it as simple as possible yeah. to ensure that when you're out on the field, any decisions that are coming in are as seamless as possible. Yeah. Um, because we're there to facilitate you girls, 30 players on the pitch, um, and you want them to have the best experience, not it to be kind of clunky because of any sort of barriers that the officials are dealing with. Yeah. In terms of that prep, obviously, you know what a training week looks like as a player. And we talk about it a lot on various podcasts that we do. But 
what is your kind of average week as a referee in terms of training and prep and stuff that you have to do? Yeah, so I suppose a lot of our week is based around our travel at the weekend. How does that look like? Yeah. Um, as a referee, you'll never get a home fixture, so you're away a lot of yeah. weekends. Um, and then I probably, from my game day, work backwards. So we do sort of like two running sessions and then three gym sessions. And as long as your body is fit, your brain will be mm -hmm. able to actually function. And for me, as a referee, the mental side of stuff is is so, so important. Mm -hmm. As a ref, if you know that you've made a mistake in that first minute, you need to be able to park it, put it in a little box and deal with it after. Because um, if you don't, then you don't want to have like compound errors running through a, a fixture. Um, so I would say it's more around um, my mental prep, mental skills, taking time for myself. Yeah. And also actually allowing myself a period where I'm not talking about rugby. Yeah. Because that allows me to then focus fully on rugby when I do go back to it and when I do go back into sort of game day game day mode. Yeah, definitely. Um, right, okay, before we start to look ahead to some of the exciting stuff you've got coming up this summer, what would you say so far in your career has been a standout moment or moments? Uh, probably doing my first um, men's pro game. I was scheduled to do a few fixtures in the lead up to that. I remember I was that. To do, like a Glasgow game. I think we did like three <laughs> announcements before we did yeah. it. <laughs> At least by the time that the game actually came around, the announcements had died out a little bit. So I was like, I could just go under the radar here. Um, but it was huge. Do you know, I, I was so nervous for that first announcement and then that got cancelled because of COVID. And then I think the second one was because of like snow weather, I yeah. think. So by the time the third one came around, I was like, this is third time lucky. And I went out and I kind of I kind of felt like there actually was no pressure on me. Yeah. During my time at Scottish Rugby, I've never felt like a female official or I've had to perform better or um, there's been any additional stress put on me because I've been put into positions. They've literally always had my back. So I went into it and they just said, Holly, go out and be you, enjoy it. And I did that and I feel like that's when you know you have your best performances and you, I came out the back of it well yeah uh, and that's that's all you ask for as a ref yeah just come out and there'd be no <laughs> Massive no, big top, yeah, no talking points yeah no I can imagine how tough that must be um and then let's talk about obviously this summer you have been named to officiate and be in the middle for Portugal versus Italy yeah. um and are the first female to referee uh mm. one of the Six Nations teams so it's an all-female um, officiating team that day. Yeah. How does it feel to not only be a part of that team, but lead it? Yeah. Um, so when I got the news, I had been at a friend's wedding and it was the Monday after and I opened the email and I like, read it and put it down. And then it dawned on me. I would, I, so I said, oh my gosh. And so I went back through and read the email again. Yeah. I was like, they've got to be joking. And then so I read through it and I texted Andy McPherson, who's my boss, and I was like, am I refereeing this game? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, yes, congratulations. Oh. And like, it's class. Like, I, I've always had aspirations to get as far as I can within refing, both in the male and female game. And I think I never envisaged it to be this quick. Um, and the fact that it is, and I actually get to do it with three girls that I've started this journey with. Uh, like Sarah Cox was at my first ever sevens competition. Yeah. Like she's one of my best friends now. Oralee and Claire Hodnett have been on this journey right from 2017 as well. And so it's really special to one, be able to, yes, be the first female, but actually do it with a group of uh, refs that we're all on this journey together, yeah. I think is class. Yeah, no, it's incredible. And like incredible for the people watching to see a team of females. Like, you know, you talked about when you came through, you had no one. And like to see a full team officiating such a high profile game, I think it's it's fantastic. You just touched on there that obviously you started with sevens. Yeah. Which do you prefer to referee, fifteens or sevens? Uh, sevens is good in the sense that like, you travel around the world and yeah. you meet people in December and then you might not see them again until the sort of like Toulouse in May. Mm -hmm. And but it feels like you've seen them just yesterday. And that's players, coaches, backroom staff. Like there's a real family vibe around it. Yeah. And it's very much once the day is done and the riffing is finished, you're able to actually have those sort of like normal conversations with people away from work. Yeah. Uh, which I really like. Um, 
But on the field, you're able to build a few more relationships with players than sevens because it's so quick. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'd probably say the sort of like political answer is both. Um, Just for different reasons. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. that's fair enough. And then, obviously, you've got a huge amount of experience in the women's game in terms of um, refereeing at 2017 World Cup and um, Six Nations, Six Nations finals, and now starting to build that experience in the men's game. What would you say are the key differences between officiating for men versus women? I'd say the first thing is the um, the games have grown so much over the past, like even time that I've been involved in them. Um, like the ball and play in the women's game is crazy. Do you know? Really? It's, yeah, it's really high. Yeah. Um, there's probably a lot you should more. know that. <laughs> <laughs> there's so many passing, so many more rucks, etc. Um, whereas the men's game is probably more centred around um, probably still set piece and territory so you know win a penalty at scrum kick for touch more mm. um, whereas the women's game is probably a little bit more open more expansive higher ball and play um, so both totally different um, mm. but yeah they'd probably be my two who gives you the worst chat boy, <laughs> men or women um, women for sure really i can imagine to be fair um staying on the kind of topic i guess of male versus female, do you think you have faced more challenges coming through this pathway? And I appreciate you said it's, it has been quite a quick progression, but have you faced any obstacles as a result of being a woman in what is quite a male dominated profession? I personally, and yes. I could sit and say, oh, I've, you know, yes, you have the odd comment from the sidelines, yeah. but I'd say that's very isolated. Yeah. Um, or you maybe turn up to a club and they think that you're a physio, but for me, and you as Scotland captain as well, it's about changing that environment yeah. and it becoming normal for me to go in and referee and you to be seen on TV playing rugby. Um, it's not that it was a, it's not derogatory comments, it's just that the nature is they've not seen it before. So I think changing that, but I've genuinely, my experience has been so positive. Um, I think I am lucky with the team that I work with here. Yeah. Uh, we have a really good culture and a strong group where we're all out for one another to actually just succeed. I don't see Mike, Sam or Ben as competition. I think if they succeed, Scottish officials, Scottish yeah. match officials succeed. And um, so I think we're really fortunate in that sense. Um, and I think wider, I've always, like I said at the beginning, I've always just felt like a, like a match official, not a female a match female official. Match That's official. amazing, yeah. Um, which I think as well shows the growth that the sport has had yeah. in the past five years that it doesn't have to constantly be separate. I think yeah. an amalgamation is actually a really good thing for the sport. 100%, like, and I think the same with the way we train and play, like we can learn so much from the men and the men's game, but vice versa as well. Agreed, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's interesting you say that. Okay, last couple of things. What is, I guess, the big goal for the future? What, what would you say would be kind of your pinnacle in terms of refereeing? Um, you can <laughs> yeah, like, go high. <laughs> go high, go on. <laughs> like I'd love to make it to like a tier one, tier one men's. Yeah. If I ever <clears throat> make it into the Six Nations or a men's World Cup, that would be unbelievable. Uh, short term at the moment, I need to just be keep doing my job at Women's Six Nations in the women's game, become a established URC and Challenge Cup ref, um, and then yeah, hopefully hopefully make it into Champions Cup as well. Yeah, um, and then last thing, if you could give your younger self um, advice in terms of what you know now um, as an official and what you know now from your journey, what would it be? I think you have to always give it your all. I think I look back probably on my um, earlier sporting experiences and I can probably use the excuse that I had a shoulder injury or yeah. um, travel for football became really tough. But did I give it my best opportunity to get back into playing for Scotland? No, I probably didn't. And so when I started refereeing, I was like, right, this is actually my shot that I can give it my all. And I want to be able to turn around and say, I'm happy with where I was because I knew I gave it 100%. I think I'd be disappointed if I turned around and said I missed out on that or Oh, I only gave 80% there. For me, you give it your all and then you can leave and reflect on experiences knowing that you could have, you literally couldn't give any more effort or time into, into the, the, your passion. 
Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I think like my like biggest thing I would take from that as well is to give it your all and not worry about what everyone else is doing. Um, so yeah, I, could, I couldn't agree more. Uh, thank you so much for chatting with me today about your career. It's honestly fascinating to, to listen to and best of luck for a big summer ahead. Thank you very much.